in the name of my ancestors peace forever and always and welcome to another edition of what we call the realities temple on earth internet ministry I am the gatekeeper the host of this program known here on social media wherever you may find me I am known as the mighty 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 mm. angel snub nub seven I am your soul brother number one we want to spend a few moments tackling a redundant probably misunderstood spoken in ignorance this topic dear to those involved in what we call or used to call the gender war I guess you can't have a war if the other side is really not participating. This war has slowly, this, this tacky, unnatural war, slowly dwindling to nothing. And from what I see, it's really the men the black man that's keeping it alive. I could be in error. I don't really see a lot of black women involved in this foolishness anymore because it has changed nothing. We got to teach the black woman. I got to teach the black man and nothing. Since its, since its inception, Nothing has changed. These black women are who and what they are and this black man is who he is and what he is and both of y'all fruit loops. Both of you are insane. So we have two insane life forms trying to judge the other you just as crazy as the other. And when you do get together, the only thing you can do is produce a crazy child that continue your foolishness. This unnatural behavior. We want to talk about a little something to bring a better understanding because a lot of times we do things out of ignorance and out of emotion we really don't even understand what has happened to us we just know it happened and we strike out in emotion that's why there has been no solution just finger pointing for over a decade I've been hearing this nonsense for over a decade. Black women do this and the black man do that and they go back and forth. And both of y'all go down to the IRS and pay your taxes to the sucker that started it all for both of y'all. But that's how it is. In a lot of traumatic situations, the victims turn on each other instead of turning on those that actually caused the problem in the first place. That's how the victim mind operates. Most times because they fear. They fear the root of the problem. So it's easier to deal with another victim 
we want to talk about this. We we chosen the topic for these few minutes. We chose the topic. Feminism did not create the modern black woman. Gangster rap did. And I know a lot of those who love gangster rap would not agree. I don't care what you, you are ignorant. Nobody cares what you like and what you don't like, what I agree with. No, I don't get, look at your situation. If you really knew out of all these years, your problem should have been solved. But when you have two crazy people, two crazy people cannot solve anything because both of them are sick. Both of them need treatment. So tonight, this morning, this evening, whenever you hear these words, we're going to make an attempt to get you to understand. And then there's another thing. Some of us like, some of us like drama. We like the beefing. We like going back and forth. We like that. It brings joy to our lives. We really don't care about a solution. That's how sick we have become. The modern black woman. I don't know what that is. I don't know what the definition of modern black woman. And this comes from, I guess, a lot of younger people, I guess, uh, over 35 years old or whatever, that was born in the uh, uh, late 90s or something, early 2000s. I don't know how that goes. I, I really don't know. But they said, the modern black woman. And they talk like their mother is not part of it. Where you come from? A cow? A chicken? Your mother have to be a modern black woman. Or maybe she's not. Let's see if we can figure out who this modern day black woman is. And is she better? Is she worse than the traditional? They always say about the traditional black woman. What is a traditional black woman? What is that? And why is she better than the modern black woman? And why she could not prevent The modern day black woman. Why the father, the traditional father could not produce or could not prevent the modern day black woman. What makes you able to judge somebody, this modern day black man? Who are you to judge any damn body? Because you got a, you have a job. Because you have an education. Whatever it is, that make you so pompous and think that you better than somebody else. You smarter than somebody else. You smarter and you better, but you over here crying and begging a woman that you say you don't even like. If you don't like her, ain't nobody forcing you to be with her. You're not on the slave plantation no more. Ain't no massa taking no whip to your backside. Oh, you got to mess with this modern day. Go get you a white woman. Go get you a transgender. Go get you a dog. Who gives a damn? But again, people like drama. And people like feeling better than somebody. And the women that you talking about don't even listen to your videos. They ignore you. They don't even know nothing about your existence. They could care less. They don't listen to videos like this. They out there in the world. And you have changed nothing and you're not going to change them. And most of you suckers hide behind a picture because you're not going to come out into the real world with your foolishness because their men, their sons, their fathers, their cousins, Pookie and Ray Ray, whatever you want, they'll kick your ass. That's why you don't keep your chump self on the internet hiding, hiding behind a, a picture. 
uh, uh, I don't deal with no uh, H's and, and B's. Uh, the black women, modern day black women, why are you hiding your coward ass behind an avatar? And you want respect. But your YouTube personalities, they take, up, they take all the heat because they're not hiding unless you're the black authority. They're not hiding behind an avatar. Like a chump. If you a so-called man, stand on yours. Take a bullet for yours. Stand on yours, but you ain't gonna stand on nothing, you cowards. I should do the rest of the video like this. Hiding behind an avatar. I stand on mine. And if it means taking a bullet, so be it. That's the way it's gotta be. These cowards talking about I'm a strong man and I'm an alpha male. I'm a I'm a I'm an alpha male. I'm an alpha male. I'm a strong black man. Hiding behind an avatar. Nobody have no respect for that. You don't even have no respect for that. So we want to talk about this for a few minutes. Because I would like to know who this modern day black woman is and why is she in the condition that she she's in? Is she in if is she in a bad position? Is she is she as messed up as these guys claim? Or are they in a position to do they qualify to judge her and talk about her? When you decide to judge somebody, get ready to judge yourself. What make you so perfect? What make me perfect? What make me so special? I can go out here and judge with others. I don't care what they doing. Who am I to judge? You going to tell somebody what they should and should not do. Who are you to tell somebody anything? There's a difference giving advice in love and constructive criticism, but we take on these, these alpha males, <laughs> these alpha males make demands. What demand do you make on yourself? If you want this woman to be better, well, oh, ain't nothing wrong with me. Oh, something wrong with you. I can guarantee you that. And then when you tell them about themselves, you a simp. You a this and you. Then they, then they turn childlike. They turn childlike the, the alpha, the, the alpha male. Let's talk about this. Realistically for a few minutes. <clears throat> I want to give my. Personal story. My experience. What I see. I'm not talking about. Something some regurgitation I got. From a YouTube personality or. Some other sucker. Making money off of your. Hurt and your pain. I'm going to tell you a personal story. Nobody asking you for a dime. Not looking for your praise. I don't care if you believe me. I don't give a damn. If you like it or don't like it, I could care less. Because you can't tell me about my experience. And my personal story. There's no narrative I'm trying to sell. Most of these people trying to sell a narrative. So they only tell a story to a certain point. They're not going to tell you the whole thing because it would, it would disturb their narrative. I have no narrative to sell. I'm here to bring us the real truth, the reality. Whether it hurts me 
or it makes me look good, it don't make any difference. I want to tell, I want to, uh, like Bernie Mac said, I want to tell it how it T-I-Z-E is. I want to keep it real. We don't even say that no more in the soul black community. Keeping it real. We, we don't even talk that way no more because we know, many of us know that you're fake. It's all about money. It's all about looking good. It's all about trying to be like Caucasian people. You said black, but you don't even know what that is anymore. Because you're so obsessed trying to be like the oppressor. So you'll never see books behind me. Every person with age, you should have your own experience. You should have your own story. These books, that's somebody else telling their story, how they see things, their research, has nothing to do with you. So the majority of the people that you talk to, they regurgitating. They copying from somebody. That's what they mean. Uh, you ain't did your research. What do you mean? I have not done my research. Where you get your information from? If you're 20 years, you should have life experience. If you're 30 years, you should have life experience. 60 years. Damn, you 60 years old and you still got to get research? You, you have not experienced? You have nothing to offer to your babies? To society and you 60 years old what you been doing with your life just regurgitating copying somebody else research copying somebody else life experience somebody else thinking so they will say well the honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches well Noah Drew Ali teaches well the Bible said well the Quran said nothing comes from them And even in this black gender war, when these YouTube personalities come up, Kevin Samuel said, Tommy Sotomayor said, the black authority said, Tariq Nasheed said, Cynthia G said, it's what somebody said. They don't never say nothing. All regurgitating, all regurgitating and copying somebody. And I just come to realize that I see in these groups these men they still hiding behind an avatar they claiming these pictures that they put that me that me that my picture that me no video there's no other proof but let's just say it is them a bunch of old heads a bunch of losers giving advice to these poor younger people poisoning their mind against their own black women because I can't get putty tack because I don't have enough money because I'm nobody won't date me that's life that's life if a woman don't want me so what I continue to live and do my thing because she don't determine me. She don't get she don't give me value. I have self-esteem, I have integrity, I have love for myself. Ain't no woman gonna devalue me. I don't have to prove nothing to nobody. But these guys are caught up trying to prove something to some suckers. I can have a million dollars. You will never know because I don't have to live and try to be like somebody else. I don't give a damn what the Jones do. The Jones can buy big houses. They can have parties every Saturday. I don't give a damn what they I'm not trying to keep up with the Joneses. That's your problem. Trying to keep up with the Joneses. Who the hell is the Joneses? I don't give a damn about no Joneses. 
trying to keep it with somebody that is not even worthy of your time. That's your problem, trying to please somebody. My daddy said I'm supposed to be married. Please your daddy, please your mama. I'm supposed to be married with children. You don't even like children. You just doing it. I please. I want to look good for my mommy and daddy. And your mommy and your daddy probably didn't even like your happy ass. They trying to please somebody because that's what we supposed to do. Grow up, get married, have a bunch of children, get a bunch of bills and die. And work yourself to death, retire, and within the next five years or five months after you retire, you die. Don't even get a chance to enjoy your, your retirement. Then all your, all your children you done spit out fight over what you left. Oh, that's real exciting. I really want to keep up with the Joneses. Got me messed up. I could care less. I don't follow the crowd. I don't give a damn what my peers do. You have to look out for yourself. If that's what you want, that's cool. But you can't make nobody marry you. You cannot make nobody love you. You can pay them. And when they get sick and tired of the money, they still going to leave. You can buy wives. You can buy husbands. You can buy your friends. Soon as you don't have any money, they all gone. But you willing to do that because I you want to try to impress somebody. Instead of yourself. And that's what this war is about. Two crazy people. Exhibiting unnatural behavior. It's unnatural. For you as a man. And you claim that you are a leader. And you're a protector and a provider. How the hell can you lead. And you at war with the person. That you claim that you're supposed to be leading. That's stupid. You're not smart. A leader is supposed to be smart. A leader is supposed to be wise. This shows that you're not leadership material. Because you don't even know what you are up against. And you're not wise at all. You want to be like your oppressor. You really wish you could get a whip. You really wish you could get a chain. You really wish you could get your gun. You really wish you could really outright for real bully somebody. And when you hear them talk, when you see them right, that's what they are, bullies. I'm so happy that they reject you. Because you're not a man. You're not an alpha anything. You're not even a human being. You're some kind of mandingo feral slave on a plantation pretending. Hiding. You're not even man enough to show your face. Because you embarrassed. That's the reason. Because you embarrassed in who and what you are. You don't want people around you to see the real you. You embarrass and you shame. If you proud and you stand on yours, what you embarrass and shame about? You don't want your mama to know. Your boss on the job, your friends and your neighbors. Why you don't want them to know if that's how you feel and you Mr. Man and you strong? No, you shame. You don't want them to know how weak and pitiful and pathetic you really are. Let's talk about this. One of the things that these so-called men, they like to express, they want to talk about the uh, feminism. The feminists did this. The feminists did that. The, the, the feminism. <clears throat> Why does feminism, feminism exist? They never say that. 
because they really don't know what it is. They just know that that's a, 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 a ideology, that's a belief that interferes in what they think women should do for them. They don't even know what it is. They don't know nothing about the women's suffrage movement. They don't know nothing about women's oppression. They don't know nothing about the only thing they know that this is something they believe is interfering with uh, them teaching their the women how to uh, uh, behave properly. Do your research. Get the information. The feminist, the women's suffrage movement actually began with Caucasian women back in the day because they were denied certain rights in this country. They could not own land. They had to have a man. Even, even as far back as the 1970s, uh, I've researched and, and, I, and I saw and I did not know and I'm a child of the 70s, but I did not know. It, was, it wasn't until the 1970s that women could not have their own bank account. They had to find some man to have a bank account. Then, of course, in the 1970s, there was a lot of things going on. Uh, women were able to get certain, certain rights and able to finally hold certain jobs. The men denied women, not only in America, all over the earth, and still doing it to this day, denied women education, denied them the ability to take care of themselves. That should be, as they say in religion, that should be a God-given right. That should be a human right. No human being should be put in a position where they have to, to depend on a certain person, male or female. But men have been doing this for generations, for eons, all over the world. Deny women education. Deny them the ability to take care of themselves. So if you don't have education, whoo, wow. So if you don't have education, and you don't have a man to take care of you, but you got to eat, then this is what caused the so-called, oh, you know what the world's oldest profession is. What is she going to do? And it's still happening right now. I don't have any education. I have no skills. What can I do? The only thing I have is my body. And these men, whether they are married or not, I put my body on the street. Give me ten dollars. Give me a hundred and fifty. Give me a thousand. Whatever, it is, whatever I can, I can get out of them because I got to eat. And the men call it, oh well, you know, prostitution is the world's oldest perfect profession. That's not a profession. That's oppression. Because we put women, you put the female in a position. She has no choice. And some men in today's modern society, they doing it because there are, because there, there are some women that will buy these male prostitutes and there are some men <laughs> that will buy these male prostitutes because I got to eat. I don't have the education. I don't want to work at McDonald's. I don't want to sweep floors. So I give you some. And you give me some. I want a thousand dollars. Well if you don't give me a thousand dollars. Somebody else will. Because I'm good at what I do. I'm good at what I do. <laughs> Using that logic. That prostitution is the world's oldest profession. Then slavery was a profession. Jim Crow was a profession. Because you put people in situations 
They didn't have no choice. And that's where women found themselves. They have no choice. And it continues to happen today. So these guys get on boats and planes or however they do. And they go find them a prostitute in Vietnam, somewhere in Asia, somewhere in Central America. Didn't buy wife. That's some prostitute you done picked up. Because no woman in their right mind, most women want to be with their man, not an outsider. Most black women want to marry a black man. Most black men want to marry a black woman. A Chinese want to marry a Chinese. That's the natural order of things. That's life. These other things are rarity. These other things are unnatural. But if you are put in a poverty, poverty stricken state and you suffering and here come a black man with a wallet and he might not be the richest person in the world but he can take you up out of that that, that ghetto in Central America or, or the Philippines wherever, the, wherever these, these poor women are at. And then of course they're not like uh, black American women. They're not like uh, American women because American women have fought for decades for their rights. In those countries those men continue to exploit those females and keep them in a servant, what you call submissive, no, keep you in a slave, a submissive position in life. So they depend on some man. So they got to bow down like a damn slave. And you don't like the women in America. You don't like the black women in America because for decades, women here have fought and fought and fought. I ain't your damn slave. And I don't need you like that. I want a baby, I'll buy, the, I'll buy your, your sperm. I will adopt. I don't need you like that. And you hate it. You hate their guts. Because they have that choice. I don't need you. Take your childish, foolish ass on somewhere. Take your silly, silly, alpha, alpha male ass on somewhere. They hate that. Just like the races. They hate to see black people billionaires. They hate to see you do good without them. They hate the Civil Rights Act. They don't want to see you voting. They want you back on the slave plantation. And they keep messing with you. Red lining and I'm going to cut this and, and, and uh, green lining and whatever the things that they do to us. You're just like the racist. Except you target another victim of the racist, which is the sisters, which is the black woman. Because you sick. In this country, there was a time when the white woman on a slave plantation she knew her Caucasian husband was going out to the slave quarters messing with the slave female. And she knew them light-skinned babies. He was the father. But there's nothing she could do about it. Because you got to have a man and she didn't have no rights. So your best bet is to shut your mouth. That's tradition. That's how they did things in America. And then, of course, when he turned his back, she would go out and get her one of them big old alpha bucks like you, except he couldn't hide. <laughs> he couldn't hide his shame <laughs> behind an avatar. This is the way those Muslim women dress. So when you mess with them Muslim women, and the only thing you can see is this, 
They got a surprise. You don't know what you might have behind that. <laughs> men, men got them doing that. But the men don't do it. But, but men have women covering themselves up because uh, 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 to keep the man from lusting. But I thought that you so strong. I thought you God. You God and you so strong, but if a woman show a little bit of her breast, a little bit of her legs, she can't even show her nose. And you you so lustful. <laughs> she show her she show her nose, y'all. I guess I guess to have me some. I, I got to, I, I got to try to get that. <laughs> That shows how weak you are. Your claims of being God, your claims of being some kind of alpha, I'm men are so strong. That's a damn lie. These women, if they want to, they should they can walk up and down the road butt naked. Shouldn't even bother you. Matter of fact, in primitive societies, women do. They walk around butt naked, basically. And you don't see the men, oh man, look at look at them breasts. Did you see no, did you see them breasts? Woo, did you see her left? Look at her, look at her booty. Oh God. They show how weak and childish you are. When we are teenagers, when we going through puberty, I understand, I can sort of understand because of curiosity and because of, of nature. And the first time you see woman's breasts and you see her butt and her curves and things of this nature. I see why teenage, if you was a teenage boy and you're curious and your nature, you're going through puberty. But once you got, once you had eight children, ten children or whatever, you still doing that foolishness? What the hell wrong with you? Still a child. Because in this society, in this patriarchal society, they have men conditioned that she's a toy. She's something to play with. She's your pet. And that's the problem here. That's the problem in America. You want to be able to control her like she's your pet dog. Come home from work. You work eight hours a day. You come home and Come on. Bring me my slippers. Where my dinner? Did you wash them kids? Them some stinky kids. Ah, I just want to chill out. Bring me a beer. Like she a dog. That's why you call her a bee. Uh, that's why you call her a bee. And I don't blame women for rising up against that type of exploitation, rising against, rising up against that type of oppression. I'm with you. That's because you are simp. You damn skippy. Because I'm against oppression and exploitation. That's not right. When the white man was doing it to your happy ass, it wasn't right. But then you want to turn around and do the same thing to her. So she has two oppressors. She got to deal with this crazy ass white man and your crazy ass. And that's what has happened. So the slave master and his wife, both of them was graping. We have to say great. We can't say uh, the other word and we have to say unalive they, they flag you for saying great you, you can't say the M word you have to say unalived you have to be politically correct I noticed on, on these YouTube, Facebook Instagram streets or wherever we find ourselves we can't be real we can't speak real 
We have to water down our speech. So the slave master and the slave master's wife, they went out in the fields and they graped the slaves who they call savages, who they call animals. You ca they call our ancestors animals, but they were sleeping with them. So what does that say about them? You call somebody an animal and put them on the level of a cow and a chicken and a sheep. But you go out and you have to grate them. Like some people grate animals. Because no sheep want to sleep with you. No chicken want to mess with you. No dog really want to mess with you. You grate them. And we was great for over 300 years. Even until the modern times, we have a low IQ. And you take pride. What type of person are they? They take pride in graping something with a low IQ and a savage. And they call them an animal. What does that say? You want to sit around here and try to be like them and please them. And you, you, uh, uh, you want them. You want to get uh, approval from them. Who are they? And they great animals. Shows how sick you are. Shows how sick we are. So this, so feminism, women's liberation, all this came about because of the oppression of women and you never hear them talk about that. They only don't like it because those things make women fight against oppression. Fight against exploitation. You're not a better human being than I am. You're not more valuable than I am. I don't give a damn about your man-made tradition because all these things Gender roles, all these traditional garbage, all of it was made by these men that don't even like women. These things don't even have no input. Even to this day, they don't have no input. Women had to, uh, women had to stand up even in the, in the marriage vow. At one time in the marriage vow, remember, one of the vows was the woman has to obey her husband and some crap. And a lot of way, I'm not doing that no more. And a lot of you lie because you don't love nobody anyway. You just want a slave. You don't love nobody. You just want somebody to serve you. I don't need nobody to go get my slippers. I don't need nobody to cook for me. But if I'm with a with my special other, just like uh, there was an episode of the Cosby Show, and Claire Hust Hustable was going to get uh, Cliff a, a cup of coffee, and what's his name, Alvin? Alvin say, "I didn't know you you did that, Miss Hustable. What you what you mean? You didn't know I did what?" You know, you're getting your husband a, a cup of coffee. Yes, I am. You know, like, you, you serving your man. And Clara Huxtable had to, had to correct him on that. No, I'm not serving my man. My man was nice enough to get me a cup of coffee this morning. And we want coffee now. So now I feel it's my turn. I'm, I'm going to return the favor. I'm going to get a cup of coffee for him because he got a cup of coffee for me this morning. We do things for each other. We're not, we're not serving nobody like that. It's about compromise. And if you love somebody, why would you want to view them and treat them like a damn slave? 
I don't care. She never bring me a cup of coffee. Matter of fact, I might not even like her coffee. It's about treating each other equals. And you hear people, oh, men and women not equal. Take your ass on somewhere. That's the problem. And racists think the same way. Black people and white folks is not equal. But you will find a problem with the racists saying that. You have a problem with racists saying that white people are superior and better and they should serve white folks. You have a problem with that. But you don't have a problem with black women serving black men and submit submission to black men. And the sad thing about it is that these races set up a system where you can actually become a billionaire. Ask, uh, what's his name? Ask Jay-Z, ask Beyonce, ask uh, Will Smith and Oprah, Bob Johnson. They set up a system where uh, you can become a, a billionaire. In, in a racist society. But you want somebody to get on their knees and serve you and you don't have nothing to offer at all. Except da 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 ding -ling. That's all. You have no factories. You create no laws. You have no resources. You have no nuclear power plants. You have no factories. You have no you, you don't have nothing. Matter of fact, some of y'all call yourself a pimp. But no, you want this fairy tale. I want a wife that served me and, and, and a dog scruffy and my 2.5 children and so I can look good uh, 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 in society. I can look holy and righteous and blah, blah, blah. That's the only thing on your mind. And you're angry at her because she don't want to fit into your damn fairy tale. That's the problem. Because you want to be like him. But look at the problems he got to deal with all the time to be like him. Because everybody not going to take an ass whooping every damn day. People get to the point, I stood all I can stand, I cannot stand no more. And they rise up and they rebel and they fight you. And that's the reason why these women in America have the rights that they have today because it's a constant, it was a constant fight. So that you can, so that you can demonstrate the human right to take care of yourself. If you can't take care of yourself, then those who you depend on, exploit you. Nobody, male or female, shouldn't be like that. So, as time goes on, when the black man, when black people, so brothers and sisters, the African American, the foundation of black Americans, whatever they want, whatever you want to call yourself today, when they began to get rights, get these freedoms, We was in the fight together. The black woman and the black man was in the fight together from the slave plantation until the 1960s. They in this fight together. But then when we start getting these freedoms and in this country, it's a patriarchal society, so we gonna give these blacks uh, these freedoms but since I'm a male, then you're going to be able to take advantage of the advantages that we give male men in this society. And so this black man, he sold the sisters out. Because now he want to be like the oppressor. And now he wants to take his newfound power and express it on a black woman. It don't make no difference what the law said. 
but he want to do, he want to be able to do what Masa do. What, what he see, what he see Masa and how Masa treat his women, now I'm going to treat mine. But you didn't do that on the slave plantation. Both of you was out on the field, you was equal. Both of you was taking the, 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 the whippings, the lynchings, equal. Both of you was getting hung, equal. Now you free. Now we unequal. I'm better than you are. So the black man betrayed our women. And even in that betrayal, she still trying to hold on to us. In your foolishness. Because you still was getting lynched. You still was being mistreated. And she's still there. Mama's still there trying to hold on to your dumb ass. Even though you mistreat her. And because this Caucasian man whooping your ass, you run into the liquor store. You run into the drug house. And then you go home and you beat up on her, you beat up on the children, and you beat up on the dog Scruffy. And it's that mindset, it still goes on to this day. And we're supposed to, these women supposed to tolerate your, keep tolerating our foolishness. Our immaturity. Because if you was a real man, if you really was a alpha, you would stand up and challenge this piece of trash. But you don't. You let him punk you. You still gotta say, Masa, can I do this? Masa, can I do that? Masa, you still you still a boy. He should respect you the same way that you respect him. And you should show him, I don't need you, punk. I can survive without you, punk. But you can't say that. Because everything that you have, directly or indirectly, without him, you wouldn't have nothing. So you're not going to tell him. I don't need you punk because you know that you need him. Even if you a black billionaire, you Dr. Dre, you Oprah Winfrey, you uh, these people, Jay-Z, without them, they're nothing. The only one who had the audacity to try to challenge them was, what's his name? Kanye West. But he's just one man. If we did it as a people, woo! And then what they call Kanye West, he crazy. Because your ass scared to challenge the powers that be. Kanye willing to risk it all because I'm a man. But why should he do that? When the people he think or he thought he was fighting for, they're not going to back you up. Well, no. Let me go get me another white woman and try to live my life. That's what he done. Let him stay on the slave plantation, blah, blah, blah. I'm not Malcolm X. I'm not going to... And That's why I will, I will never do it. Why would you fight? Why would you stand up for people that won't stand up for themselves. And so because of the black man's mistreatment of our soul sisters, this black woman, she began to join and understood where this white woman was coming from in the feminist movement. And there are those, because you angry and upset and you mad, and you want to try to shame her for joining her, another sufferer. But see, if you did not mistreat her, if you were an idiot, she wouldn't went there to begin with. She was always with you until you turned and stabbed her in the back. That's the reality of it. Talk to these men. Talk to your men. Talk to the men in charge. They don't want to talk about it. 
You want to talk about how these, how men was better in the past, how relationship, she was forced into those relationships as a woman denied the right to for self-sufficiency, proper education because I'm a woman. Because I have a vagina. I'm not as valuable as a man. And now you angry. Because women stood up for themselves and continue to say, I don't need you like that. And they don't need you. You wanted to be like it was back in the day. Just like racists wish, I wish it was back to back. I wish it was back uh, the way it was back in the day when black folks were slaves. When black folks was in Jim Crow. I wish it was those days. Those were the good old days. You just as sick as they are. And then they use their man-made religion that they got from foreigners because there's no religion that we have that was born in America. God didn't come here and give Americans nothing. The Bible is for, the Quran is for, and all these different religions, all this stuff from these women hating, anti-woman foreigners. And you adopt their religion. Everything about these religions and these ideologies is male. Anything of significance, men did it. Women don't do nothing except serve and submit. I'm a I'm a helpmate. I'm a helpmate to, to man. Help them do what? Keep you a slave. That's what you a helpmate for. And you can do your research. And when you study these Quran and the and the Bible. It's anti-woman. I don't see how any woman can want to gravitate toward these things. These things aren't for you. These are slave books for you. They even tell you, you can't teach nobody. Women should be silent. That's what it says in some of these books, right? Women should be silent. In some of these places, when men are talking, women should be quiet. Shut your damn mouth. Matter of fact, leave the room. Leave the room. Men talking. And make sure you make sure you like that. Because I'm talking, but if you if you, if I see your nose or your mouth, make my dangling jump. <laughs> These strong men. They strong men, but I, I have to go to P. Diddy's freak off. And everybody play with each other's dingling and putty tats. Children. These are adults. This is child stuff. This is something that you would expect from teenagers, uh, people going through puberty. Oh, I got a dingling. Oh, I got a putty tat. And we play around and try to figure stuff out, whatever. Is that how yours work? What yours look like? We do that when we're children, going through puberty, curiosity. You old ass people get drunk and you play with your dinglings and your putty tat. Y'all some disgusting, nasty, trifling ass folks. The children of God. What God are you children of? So pathetic and pitiful. And they always say God said. God ain't said a damn thing. Put it on tape. Show a tape. Where God said do this and do that. No. You said that God said. God ain't said a damn thing to nobody. The book of God. God ain't wrote no book. All these books and things is written by men. And they claim God said 
They claim God did this and God said that. No proof, no evidence of nothing. God told them that. No, you want another slave. You want these women to be your slave. You want the black man and woman to be your slave. They said the black man and woman are a curse. And because we are a curse, we're supposed to be a slave to Caucasian people according to their Bible. God said. No, they said. God ain't said nothing. Just take their, you just take your oppressor's word. Lies. And then, oh wow. Man, I got, woo, this subject, it's going to take longer than I thought. Let me see if I can get through this. So while toward the end of the women's liberation movement or whatever, the 70s, we started going to the 80s, we had a, we had a, uh, a sitcom called Good Times. And there was a character, her name was Thelma Evans. And a lot of brothers like Thelma Evans. You know, Thelma Evans was the, that's one of the reasons why I, I watched Good Times. I wanted to see Thelma, Thelma, Thelma. I wanted to see Thelma. And I've never heard nobody, none of these men complain about Thelma. This is the 1970s. This is the 1970s. But Thelma was a feminist. You heard Thelma talk about women's live. And you saw that Thelma did not go for that man controlling her garbage. Nobody didn't complain about Thelma. But Thelma also believed in marriage. She came from a family they believed in, in marriage. And the family, uh, 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 the dog Scruffy and all that type of good stuff, this fairy tale stuff that we always talk about. They believed in that. Thelma grew up with a father and a mother in the house, right? But James died. So Florida became a single mother. And nothing changed. They still was the same. Thelma was still the same woman. The same way she was when James, her father, was alive. The same way she was when he left, when he passed. And Florida became single. It's not about the physical people in the house. It's about the principles. It's about how you want to live your life. And so Thelma, this is the way she wanted to live her life. And really it didn't make any difference even if James was still there. Because once a child, once a person come into their own mind, I'm going to do what I want to do just like you have done. A lot of us, we was raised in Muslim households or Christian household, and we decide we don't. I don't believe that no more. It don't make no difference if your daddy is in the house. So what? It don't make any difference because once a child begins, and you know that because we all been through that. You start coming into your own state of mind. Influenced by outside influence, what goes on at school, what you see on TV, blah, blah, blah. And your parents, nobody controls those things. So it's up to that child, that individual, what I'm going to do with this information that's coming to me. I know what mama said. I know what daddy said. I know what the police officer said. I know, I, I know I'm getting good advice, but I'm going to do what I want to do, good or bad. That's life. It's the principles that you make for yourself what you want to stand on. 
Now, Thelma Evans was married. You know, she got married and blah, blah, blah. She was the good girl. But J.J. and Michael was allowed to be fornicators. They could go out and screw around and blah, blah, blah. Because there's double standards here. And these double standards have been going on for whatever. The females have to keep themselves pure and holy for a man that's not pure and holy. He can go out and sow his root uh, uh, seeds and blah, blah. He can do whatever the hell he want to do to somebody else's child, somebody else's daughter. You can go out and exploit somebody, but, but you got to save some of these women so they holy and pure so when the whore gets tired of sowing his seeds, I want somebody pure and holy. Because Thelma Evans' husband was not pure and holy. He was a football player, and the women go to him, and you know, he had he did what he what he done. Now, but now I get to have Thelma, and chances are she's a virgin. Double standard. And that's fair. So now in our society now, women don't go for that no more. I don't want to whatever you know, I, I'm not geeing for that no more. I don't care nothing about that stuff. I'm not saving myself for you pieces of trash. You want to have fun, I'm gonna have fun too. What's good for the goose is good for the gander. And you don't want to hear that because you have this self-righteous. Here you are, you can go out and be a, a piece of trash, but you want to come to come home to something clean. No, trash deserve trash. You was out there being trash and you deserve trash. Then you have those who can't get nobody. But at the same time, they reject folks. They reject people because they too fat, too skinny, or don't have the right appearance or whatever. Oh, don't reject you for being boring, for being a damn nerd. Don't reject you for being ugly. But you can do you can do the same thing to other people to, uh, to to other women. Oh oh, but don't do it to you. Double standards, hypocrites. So women was forced, and you even heard them say back in the day. Even if you went. To even on good times, you heard them say, even if you go to college, if a woman go to college, look out, you got to find you a good man to take care of you. You got to find somebody to take care of you. Deny self-sufficiency. Deny value. You got to have a man to give you value. You don't need no man. And that's what's wrong with us. We we in the black soul community, we believe that we have to be connected to white people. We need to be connected to them in some kind of way to give ourselves value. We can't do nothing without them. And you put that on yourself. And you wonder why these folks are crazy as hell and do what they do because they don't there's no value in themselves. There's no value in the black community. We gotta we gotta be associated. We can't do nothing without Massa. You can't even unite. Cause you don't love each other. You have this self hatred. This vile thing. Because you're pushing somebody else's agenda. Pan-Africanism is foreign. It's not your agenda. Islam is not your agenda. It comes from somebody else. Uh, More Science Temple came from somebody else. These aren't our agendas. Christianity is not your agenda. It was justified. It was used to justify your enslavement. It's not your agenda. You are selling it and holding on to the shackles of somebody. Somebody is your slave master. You got 
You say that you're free, but you don't act like a free man and woman. You got to have a masa somewhere. That's why they don't like me. Why you don't need a masa? I don't need no masa. I don't need nobody to give me value. I don't need nobody to tell me how to think what to do. I don't need no divine leader, teacher, and God. I'm grown. I'm an adult with my own brain. And I will follow God if God came to me. God ain't came to me. God has never come to America. None of these religions, none of this spirituality has come to us in America. Because it don't exist. That's some old outdated stuff from ancient people that was given to illiterate folks in foreign lands who didn't know no better. And they bring it to us because we slaves on the plantation. We don't know no better. This is 2024. It's a whole brand new day. And even in your religion, it says that the God will bring a new heaven and a new earth and the former things shall pass away. What do you think the former things are? If it's 2,000 years old, it's got to be former. If it's 1,500 years old, 5,000 years old, whatever, it's got to be the former thing. Hell, even if it's 100 years old, it's got to be the former thing. It's brand new. We got to be new. And to let the former things pass away. And that is the purpose in biology of death. Death is the improvement of life. Take out the old model, bring it in the new model. That's the purpose of death. Where the old model didn't work, we change it up a little bit. The new model can work better. This is the purpose of death as expressed in biology. There was a time we used to talk about black pride. Michael Evans wore a jacket called Black Pride. When I was growing up, it was always about Black Pride, dignity. I grew up in the 1970s, but I was around people that was born in the 1930s and 40s and 50s. So I can tell you how they, I was a child and I saw with my own eyes, I don't have to read a book. I can tell you, we act like we live in some type of holy and righteous. People was drunk back then. They was fornicators and adulterers back then. These fake ass families, some of them was real, a lot of them was fake. I wish things was the way, they was fake. It wasn't as happy, happy, joy, joy as you believe. They tell that lie to sell this fake-ass narrative y'all believe in. But at one time, the soul community, black Americans, African Americans, Foundation of Black Americans, Freedmans, however you want to call yourself, at one time, our people had pride. And they wanted to develop and do better than what they was off the slave plantation. And we had to be 10 times better than the white folks. And so you can go back and look at those pictures of brothers and sisters, the fancy clothes. They weren't trying to show off. I'm trying, I'm, I'm not a slave no more. They're trying to express their freedom. And they was doing better than the white folks. And that's why the white folks took action. I got, we got to stop them. Because coming off the slave plantation, there was an attitude, there was a behavior. We wanted to be more dignified and character. And we had to, and we, and we had to be better, 
Because in order to survive and in, in order to be able to make it in this society, we had to be ten times better. So you racist, what the hell you expect from the from these people who you keep down? The only way they can make it, they have to be ten times better than you. So what do you expect? Then they get jealous. You caused it. Because in order to be able to survive here, we have to be ten times better than you. How did that happen? You did it. We had to be ten times better. And that's what we did. And we was thriving. And black men and black women was together. Because they know at that time they didn't have a choice. And there was no black man talking about submit and serve and all this stuff like that that gave her, the black woman, her respect. And they worked together as a team. And they saw her value. You don't see her value. You just see a servant. You don't love her. You just see somebody as a tool like the Masa did. You just see her like a goat. A chicken, a frog, or whatever. You don't see her. You don't love her. That's why you can go back and forth. Men that love their women, they just shut the hell up. And you don't, you don't, you don't work. You don't. I, I, I'm tired of you putting your put your put your shoes with it. You just sit there. You don't want to. You don't. You ain't gonna get involved in all that arguing back and forth with you. Then when she finished nagging, you know you are so cute when you get mad. I love you. <laughs> I got your dinner ready. That's how it's supposed to go. That's how it's supposed to go. But you want to serve it. A slave. You want to be like Masa. How he treat his women. And, and how... How does that go for him? Every time you turn around, she divorcing him, taking half. That's where it got started. You didn't have no damn half. But you got to look at it this way. If you don't want me to work, I got to stay here with all these children, do all this domestic housework and, 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 and favor you every night or whatever. Yeah, I deserve half. I deserve half. That's where half started. We wasn't doing that. But since you want to be like them, welcome to 50-50. Since you want to be like them, welcome to, uh, I divorce him, I won't have. Or you could be like Mary J. Blythe. It's vice versa. Her husband, I won't have. Since you want to be like them, you want to live like them, you think like them, then that's that's part of the, the, the game. That's part of the sick game. So in the civil rights era, there was a certain amount of understanding. And we still had black pride and we loved the black woman. And the reason why is because there was an understanding and there was there was a mutual respect between her and him. But when the respect began to dissolve and you want to start treating her like he treat his woman, how long do you think that's going to... And see, some women are brainwashed by religion. Well, you know, the Bible said, well, the Quran said, as these younger women start coming up. I don't want to hear that. They become like Thelma Evans. I'm not going to let no man treat me like that. I don't need you, bro. Nobody should tolerate being exploited. Nobody should be uh, tolerate being treated like a piece of trash. Use toilet paper. Yes, I side with them. Because when we was oppressed, she was with me. And she stayed with you 
until she couldn't tolerate your foolishness. Because now you big, you think you free, you think you got all that. Now you want to be like Masa. I wonder who my slave going to be. Guess it's going to be her. Hey, slave. Hey, slave. I don't think so. <laughs> so we start coming from up out of the 70s. And what we have to understand. During slavery, they would take the pregnant black woman and make her watch the lynching, the beating, because they understood just like a woman can eat an apple and an apple goes to her baby, the slave master understood the psychology of that that fear that that woman was watching would go and become part of the makeup of that embryo she was carrying. And this baby would be born like many of, of you are born. And you may not believe what I'm talking about. We are born with a fear of them. And you don't even know why. I don't care what you say out of your mouth, there's a fear. That's why you can't, that's why there was very few slave rebellions. As a people, you wouldn't rebel because as a people, you were scared and you're still scared to this day. I don't care what you say out your mouth. Your actions speak. Actions speak louder than words. And your actions show you still scared. You can say anything out of your mouth. Because fear was put into the womb itself. The woman was made to watch these lynchings and these murders. And then We don't look at it, but women watching these horror films and these gangster films and violent whatever, and she's pregnant, those things, these images, all this is going and becoming a part of the development of this child. We just, it don't mean nothing until we get the product. Why do they act this way? Oh, you don't know? We, our development, our brain development as a being, we are on a higher level than a dog and a cat and rats and mice and giraffe. And these things develop. And you wonder why human beings act the way murder and mayhem don't even bother you. Because you already knew about that. Being formed as an embryo before you was even born. And it don't bother you. So in the 70s, the dignity and the character that we develop begin to break down and begin to fade away. Then you begin to see these uh, black exploitation films. We begin to praise the pimp and the prostitutes and the drug dealers and things of this nature. And of course, we still getting women pregnant. Those images, those ideas, that behavior is going to this child. And all these things are acceptable behaviors. It's, it's entertainment. This is the beginning of the ratchet behavior in our community. And I can bear witness because I didn't see all these things until the black exploitation film. I didn't see all this stuff. 
the beginning of the ratchet behavior was the black exploitation film feeding our the masses of our people this this uh what's the word I would degenerate behavior. We went from dignified wearing suits and ties and aristocratic. Now we're we're hustlers and pimps and prostitutes and dope fiends. Or holier than thou, uh, I'm a Muslim, I'm a Christian, and we run around and I'm holier. God loves me. And it starts breaking down. I saw this with my own eye. Then I began to see the ratchet. That's the beginning of the wearing the weaves and the and the long fingernails and all this other stuff. Women began to adorn themselves. Because that's part of that degenerate mindset and behavior. The tattoos, the, the, the nose earrings, and the men, even the men start getting earrings and becoming more effeminate. Oh, it's just one earring. Next thing you know, they have four, five, six. They have it all tongues and tattoos and, and color your hair red, white, and blue. All these things start happening then toward the, the end of the, the, the 70s into the 80s. And by the time you reach the close to the 90s, like 80, the 80s, the end of the 80s, close to the 90s, whatever, then we have what we call the rise of gangster rap. That's the frosting on the cake. That's all we need now. We already been turning ratchet. But now here comes the frosting on the cake. This is what's going to destroy our women 1,000% with the help of the man. With the help of the man. We're going to say this and get out of here. I'm going to show you. Because this is my experience. I've seen it with my own eyes. These things did not exist. Like, it, I will say this. The behavior was there, but not on the level like we see today. It really got to going on by the early 80s or late 80s with the rise of gangster rap. The what's wrong with gangster rap? They keeping it real. You always say, keep it real. Tupac was real. Uh, uh, Public Enemy real. KRS-One is real. I said gangster rap. It's real what they was talking about. But it wasn't real. That's not reality to many brothers and sisters. They wasn't living that type of life. I didn't know nothing about it. I wasn't living. We didn't live that type of life. Didn't know nothing about it. But then this started coming out. And the music got a beat. And you watch these images on TV. I'm keeping it real. And then the sisters became a target. Because the country always been anti-woman. But now the target is just the black woman. And the black man is the one pulling the trigger. He talked about his liquor. I'm being real. Talk about my neighborhood, the pimps and the drug, that's being real, real. But let me tell you about these H's in my neighborhood. And these B's in my neighborhood. Expressing the anti-woman hatred as usual in this country, this country and all over the earth, anti-woman. But here's an idiot so stupid I'm going to attack my own women. Make your masa happy. Look at these fools. Call your women H's and B's. And other men wouldn't stand up 
and fight against it. Because the reality is they're anti-women too. So the sisters is on their own. Stop calling me that. And pretty soon it get to the point where they begin to call themselves H and B's the same way the white man got us calling ourselves the N-word on our own. So now we happily say, I'm an N. Voluntarily. And now she's calling herself a H and a B. Voluntarily. And what do it say in the scripture somewhere? It talks about if a man thinketh, so is he. But you idiots, if your woman is an H and a B, then you are too, because that's where you come from, you damn fool. Every time you call her an H and a B, that's what you're calling yourself. Because that's where you come from. Oh, no, not my mama. No, it's all of you. When you call one woman that, you call it all of them that. You call her one woman the H and the B, all of them, including your mama, your sisters, and your daughter. So Jay Z sitting around here made a billion dollars calling women H and B. Your daughter is a H and a B. You stupid ass punk. Y'all stupid. But you want to try to put yourself into these categories. Say, oh, but my mama not like that. My auntie not like that. And as far as other men is concerned, yours is too. A H and a B. As a man thinketh, so is he. So since that's what I am. And people do things and don't even know the reason why they're doing it. You see in our communities now, black folks dress any kind of act all any kind of savage, tacky looking way. Ain't no human being on this earth have blue hair. You got blue hair, pink hair, but where they getting that from? They getting it from them. They was doing that first. At one time, the world. When you was in your right state of mind, the world was trying to copy us. Now you have degraded yourself. Trying to copy them and you look like a damn freak. With your blue hair and all your tattoos and metal in your tongue and your mouth and in your navel and in your booty and, all, and putting plastic in your booty and weaves and you look like a... The, the savage that they called you in slavery, now you have actually be you actually have become that. And that is because we've never had a man in our life. We've never had a James Evan living in the house to protect us. There was an episode of Good Times and James wanted to go out of town to make money for his family and Florida said, no, James, you can't go. Your, your, your son need, need his father. Because all these influence, all these things, all these predators coming after your children. I, you, you, need, you need daddy. You need a Somebody strong, you need your parents to defend you. We don't have nobody. And instead of to continue to go up, we've gone down, even though we make money. So with gangster rap, the mindset going to the children is looking like a damn freak, looking like a gang member. The nose rings, the red hair, the weaves. I get paid, but you like a damn fool. You look crazy. They billionaires and dress crazy and, and getting drunk. Let's go to the freak, Nick. Let's go to the freak off. Let's be freaks. What is a freak? Freak is somebody.
somebody or something that is abnormal, something that is unnatural. That's what a freak is. At one time, the freak only came out at night. But now the freak is in the daytime. And the freak has no shame. There was a time that these behaviors, people were shamed. Now it's a badge of honor to be a freak. I'm going to, the, even the celebrities, I'm going to P. Diddy's Freak Nick. You know damn well if you go to a Freak Nick party, it can't be good. It's got to be something freakish going on. More than just having a drink of liquor. And there we go. And the sad thing is, we actually, even women, paid. You buy the records. You paid to get called a H. You got paid. You actually buy the records. You paid to get called a B. You buying it. Oh, wow. And if these men, if you did not want that, then that's what you have to battle against. You cannot expect nobody that's unrighteous like that, somebody that's in the damn cesspool like that, they're going to just give up and obey you because you holy and righteous. No, I don't give a damn about your self-righteous and your picket fence fairy tale ass life. No, I don't want you. I want me a thug. I want me a gangster. I want somebody to call me a B. I want somebody to call me an H. I want somebody to make a, a just take just take control and make a slave out of me. You too damn weak. Coming on Facebook, Instagram, hiding behind a picture. And some of these guys get lucky. They find a weak, pathetic, pitiful woman. I love my husband. We, we should, you find a patsy, we should submit to our husband, you know, the same traditional baloney. That's, that's what puts you in the position, the, the worst condition we're in right now, because folks submitting to these idiots. They do not have your best interest in mind. It's all about them and their freakology. I get paid. There's no black pride. It's all about I get paid. Even the pro-black folks. I, I'm well. I'm getting paid. Some of them even tell you. I, uh, I, my channel is about edutainment. Cash at me. I'm getting paid. YouTube pay them. I was about getting paid. It's not about the. The dignity of a people. It's not about the upliftment of I just want it. As long as I get paid, I don't care what I have to say. I don't care what I have to do. I, I, I get paid. The hell with black pride. I'm an American. I just want to get paid. And you will hear that from the mouth of many of these uh, folks. I don't care. They don't care about the black stuff. I just want to get paid. I'm an, I'm an American. Not a black American. I'm just an American. I'm getting paid. They don't have no pride in the people no more. So there's no love for the people. You don't expect no love for the black woman. So what's the destiny for you? The destiny for you is to go to the human scrap yard where your ass belong. Where all the other trash and throwaways and leftovers is. Because that's where you're on your way to. Because you don't care nothing about yourself. You're not interested in being a real full functioning man. Because a real, function, real full functioning man has to stand up. Uh, we done had enough. I understand what has happened. And uh, I want to apologize. But from this day on, <laughs> the buck stops here. That's what men do. You're not going to argue with these women. When you straighten these men up, these women will fall in place. It was your ass that put them and caused them to be in the position they're in now. So now it's up to you to get your ass straightened our agenda up and put us back 
where we need to be to make our ancestors proud. More so, see the real value in yourself. Show the real value in your strength in yourself. Straighten up this man. And these women will straighten up easily because that's what they want from you. They want you to be strong. They want you to be standing. But the only thing on your mind is pussy tat. Putty tat. Living this fairy tale, fairy tale life trying to compete with the oppressor. You want to be white. That's the problem. To be black means I got the challenge. Why? And you scared. You scared. And you don't know what to do. The reality is, even if you're brave, you don't know what to do. But I can tell you, it has been revealed to us what to do. That's why I say on this platform the most realistic and best solution that we have is what we call the vision, the proposal of Operation Exodus Mississippi campaign. We need to learn and examine what that's all about. Don't trip on the name Understand what it's about and be serious about it. There's nothing else going to be able to help us. And it won't take them. Once you begin to work on that, you'll be shocked how a lot of this will start straightening out almost immediately because that's what the people want. They're waiting on the Messiah. And the Messiah is not one person. The Messiah is this gender that we call black manhood. It's you and me working as a team and solving this problem once and for all. Stop listening to all these YouTube personalities or, and all this has been outdated stuff. It's not getting us nowhere. If it did, I shut up. But it's not getting us nowhere. We need a breath of fresh air. We need to look for this God which is ourselves and breathe life into the dust and the dirt. Bring life to ourselves. It's easier than you think. Or if you want to continue to do this, because like I said earlier, a lot of us, we like drama. We like beef. We like, my mother said, it's very easy to be stupid. Very easy to be ignorant. Don't, don't take a college degree. And that's why a lot of us don't mind staying stupid, because it's easy to do. It's easy to keep doing the the, the tiddlywink stuff that we're doing. And that's easy. But the complex. And really the complex is really simple. It's your fear. It's your ignorance. It's your loyalty. To those things that aren't loyal to you. They have not produced for you. So I would talk because I have a responsibility because I know better. I know what caused these things. I saw it. We are where we're at not because of feminism. We are where we're at because of ourselves. We become victims of easy money trying to please and be like somebody else. 
who don't have your best interest at heart and they sit back in the cut and just laugh. What did they do for you during the crack e epidemic? Sit back and laugh. Let them Negroes crack. They stupid for doing crack. And you still depending on them, following them. They don't care about you like that. Now, they, now they're going through the meth epidemic. Over 100,000 of them died last year, I believe, overdose on meth, which, which some say is worse than crack. Now there's concern. Not that much concern because this is nothing but poor people. Maybe some of the middle class. They, nobody cares. When Dr. King was having the Poor People's March, it was about poor people, which is the majority of the people in the country. Poverty stricken is a big, a large portion of the people in this country. There was poor people when our ancestors was on the slave plantation. It's not a black and white thing because they didn't give a damn about the poor people when our ancestors was on the slave plantation. They didn't give a damn about the poor people during the Great Depression. President Roosevelt had to make a move on the rich folks to get the country back on track again. They didn't give rich, these folks, rich folks don't give a damn. I, I lost, I'm eating. They don't care nothing about no poor people. Who care about the poor? So it's up to us. What you want to do? I know it was gangster rap. That was the frosting on the cake that put us where we were at. The exploitation movies started to go down, down, down. We begin to see ourselves stop having dignity and pride. We didn't have to work so hard with the civil rights laws. We didn't have to be 10 times better than the white folks. So it goes down, down, down. It's our fault because we don't teach our children nothing. I know when I was growing up, my people didn't teach me nothing. Everything, anything that I had to learn, I had to learn on my own. My people didn't teach us nothing, not even about our family. I don't know nothing. But that's all water under the bridge. What are we going to do starting today? Keep the nonsense going or take the proper action to solve the problem once and, once and for all and become the great people that we have the potential to become. This is not us. We're better. And time, history has shown that we are better than this. Well, at least I get paid. <laughs> okay, all right. Forget you. I'm getting paid. I'm getting paid. <laughs> oh, well. Thank you for listening. Jot down your comments. Subscribe. Share. All that type of good stuff. And until... Um, if time allows us to meet again I would like to uh, matter of fact uh, I hope that we can be together December the 7th 2024 for our main message of the year we call it Soul Liberation Day 2025 our theme is Black America Black Americans Pioneers of a New Reality December the 7th, 2024. Probably at 
p.m. Central Time. That's usually when we do it. Or maybe 7.30. I'm not really sure. We'll, I, we'll, we'll keep you updated. Let you know. And, and well, you'll know. You'll know. And uh, hope to see you then. Maybe we'll talk before uh, the main uh, message that we have for the year. But that's Soul Liberation Day. Our version of Savior's Day. Soul Liberation Day 2025. December the 7th, 2024. Our theme is Black Americans, Pioneers of a New Reality. Be da or be ska. <laughs> On that note, again, thank you for listening. It's always an honor that you would give us a few moments of your time. I'm Angel Snubbed Up 7. This is the Realities Tip on Earth. As our ancestor, Dr. Cornelius, used to always say as in parting, we wish you love, peace, and soul. And we are Audi 5000.